Hello and welcome back. Today I'm building another one of my online acquisitions. It's a 2007 Lindbergh Tuna Clipper in 160th scale, model number 77221. And when it's completed, it'll be 14 inches long. As I'm opening the box, I find the artwork's excellent and it shows a lot of detail and the builder even did some weathering on the kit in the photo. Lindbergh was not a brand I'm familiar with and when I did a little research, it doesn't look like they're still actively issuing kits. In, in fact, the toy manufacturer that owned the brand, J. Lloyd International, is, is no longer listed as one of their brands. Even so, I, I did find a couple articles uh, about them and if you're interested, I'll put those links below. On first inspection, the sprues seem to be well detailed and there wasn't a lot of flash even on some of the smaller parts with fine details, they look pretty good. The hull on this little guy though was another story and it turned out to be a little troublesome. I can't imagine the two halves were made this way but they didn't exactly fit together and it actually took a fair amount of of adhesive gymnastics to get the things lined up. In fact, I purposely chose CA glue because I knew I could get an instant bond and it wouldn't pull itself apart later. I started in on the hull of the ship first and you, you really can't tell it from the angle, but I'm just barely holding the two halves together here and, and that was just so I could put a little kicker on it. You, you can see it lying there how large the gap is to be closed up and held together. Next it called for the prop shaft and once I had that in place I was able to finish marrying up the two halves. I know it's hard to see there white on white but I've got a little bit of tacky putty on the end of a toothpick and I'm using that to line up and glue the prop shaft in place again using CA glue but in hindsight I probably should have used the regular model glue for that. Here's a little tip. When using CA glue and accelerator, the accelerator isn't instant. While it's super fast, there is a period of time between when the kicker hits the CA glue and it hardens. And if you let go too fast, you can miss it, like I almost did right there. After a little more CA glue and tape, I was able to get the hull together and then I set that aside to rest a little bit. After that excitement, I moved on to some of the structures, starting with the bait tank. Putting the walls of the bait tank together and making sure they were straight took a little ingenuity, but unfortunately the footage was unusable because I pretty much did the whole thing out of frame. Here I can show you on the pilot house how I use tape to hinge each joint so that when you pull it together, the joints are under tension. The technique is to tape the two pieces together in alignment, but with the glue joint laid open so that when you pull the pieces together into the correct alignment, it puts that joint under compression. You should be able to see what I'm doing once I get the port side wall turned in the right direction. When you have everything lined up, all you need to do is lay down some glue over the joints and position everything at the correct angle so that uh, it dries straight. Masking is one of those processes I find very relaxing, and, and I'm sure that may sound strange to some of you. And I was enjoying this one right up until I saw the big gaping holes in the back of the skeg. This was the perfect time to get out the tester's contour putty I picked up at my local hobby store. I found it easy to use, and the texture is pretty similar to a, like a fine wall plaster. It dried quickly, and it sanded easily. 
turning a popsicle stick into a tool was a trick I learned while helping my granddad restore old cars. If he didn't have the correct shape tool to apply the bondo to a contour on a car body, he would just cut it out of whatever he had on hand. In, in many cases, it was just a plastic jug or a small piece of wood. The same went for Sandy. If he needed a particular shaped block, he just made it. Here, I needed a small sanding stick, and, and I didn't have the correct size at the moment, and I actually don't have any plans on buying them because I don't use them very often, and I can typically make whatever I need, which for me is, is kind of the best part of the journey. So, a popsicle stick, glue, sandpaper, and you've got sanding sticks. Getting back to the masking. I'm just using standard hardware store masking tape here cut into thin strips. I I've had good luck with it in the past and if you stay tuned you'll see how it went this time. If you're needing to cut around a, a small detail you need to make sure you're using a very sharp blade otherwise the tape generally just tears instead of cutting and you'll just have to start all over. After installing the rudder right side up, I'm able to finish the last bit of glue that holds that in place. I found that the glue was under so much tension that my regular spring clamp wouldn't hold the last bit of the rudder support together and I had to resort to a slightly more drastic clamping method before moving on to the propeller. Here I'm using CA glue again because the, the fit wasn't perfect and regular model cement, while it would hold, it would have taken a long time to set and I didn't want to just sit there holding the thing waiting for it. I chose a dark green for the hull and I'm using my Iwata single action siphon feed for this. It lays down a good even coat in a hurry without a lot of overspray. And then I just put a, a, a nice coat of clear polyurethane over top of that. Even more enjoyable than the masking is the unmasking. When it's done right, that is. It's like opening up a present. Um, here I've got some issues, though, and that'll need to be touched up. If you're enjoying my video, I really would appreciate it if you would consider hitting the subscribe button. It supports my channel and helps YouTube know who else to share my content with. For the upper part of the hull, I switched to 3M's automotive performance masking tape to see if it would provide a better seal around the edges. And I didn't find it any better than just the standard hardware store stuff. So I've ordered some different masking tape that I hope will do a better job in the future and we'll We'll show you that if it does. Here's a quick fun fact. Commercial rod and reel tuna fishing uses live bait typically a herring or mullet or a bait fish of similar size on 200 pound test line using barbless hooks. And if you should happen to know why they use barbless hooks, let me know in the comments. Here I'm testing out some airbrush paint I picked up off Amazon and yes I'm actually testing it out directly on the model without trying it somewhere else first and yeah you're right that was stupid. That said I got lucky. It, it covered nice and 
Although I was expecting it to be a flat finish, it actually turned out to be more of a semi-gloss. So I'll probably need to put a little matte down over that before I'm done. In the end, this stuff's going to go into my collection of paints and finishes, and, and I'm going to be more selective where I use it next time, though. I'm not going to go as far as to say that it's an alternative to some of the more expensive model paints, because it's not. And I've actually decided to break down and spend some money, and I'm going to try out some of the Vallejo brand paints to see how they do. Once I had the larger pieces that made up the structure of the boat primed and painted, I was able to start putting some things together. Gluing the decks into the hull came with its own set of challenges. Where the hull it was under so much stress when gluing the two halves together, it still wanted to flare open at the top just a little bit, and everything had to be taped and clamped to hold it together in just the correct orientation. Also, the glue surfaces were razor thin, and it, it seemed to take a lot to hold it in place. Uh, it just didn't want to soften up the plastic enough to get it to stick. The pilot house and the cover over the bait tank were the last two pieces of the superstructure, if you will, I needed to complete in order to start getting into the details on this kit. And I'm really pleased to see the thing starting to look like the thing on the box. I very much appreciate you making it to the end of the video with me. If you like what you've seen, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider hitting that subscribe button. It supports my channel and it really does help YouTube know who to share my content with. If you're interested, the next video is on the right. The playlist is on the left, and there's a subscribe button there in the middle. Thank you again, and uh, go make something.